going with you in prayer for illumination. I'll read the light print and you can read the bowl. Eternal God, in the reading of your scripture, may your word be heard. In the meditations of our hearts, may your word be known. And in the faithfulness of our lives, may your word be shown. Amen. Our first lesson is in Exodus chapter 34, verses 29 through 35 can be found on page 142 in the Bible. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that, that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him. And Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near and gave them in commandment all the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, but the skin of his face was shining. And Moses would put the veil on his face again until they went in to speak with them. The second lesson is Psalm 99, found on page 819 in the temple. Once again, we will read responsibly. I will read the light print and you will read the whole. The Lord reigns, let peoples tremble. The Lord sits in burn upon the cherubim, let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion and is exalted over all peoples. Let them praise your great and wondrous name. O Lord is the Lord. Mighty ruler, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness. Extol the Lord our God, worship the Lord's footstool. Holy is the Lord. Moses and Aaron were among God's priests. Samuel was also among those who called on God's name. They cried to the Lord, who answered them, who spoke to them in the of God. They kept God's testimonies and the statutes God gave them. O oh Lord our God, you answered them, you were forgiven by us. Extol the Lord our God and worship his at his holy mountain. Sure, the, Lord our God the third lesson can be found in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 through chapter 4, verse 2. This can be found on page 1797 in your Bible. Since then we have such a hope, we act with great boldness, not like Moses who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of, of the glory that was being set aside, but their minds were hardened. Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, the same veil is still there, since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now, now the Lord is in the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord, as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone inside of God. So I've got an illustration of the scripture I'm going to read from Luke. First, the easy question, which one is Jesus? Right in the very center. And standing next to him are two figures from the Old Testament who appear to him. 
Jesus went up on a mountain to pray. He took three of his disciples. You can see there down there on the ground. And these two figures from the Old Testament, one is Moses and one is Elijah. Now they're not labeled. Do you want to take a guess which one you think Moses is? I think you're probably right. Because according to the Bible, Moses was very old when he died. And God takes him and buries him. The other one is Elijah, who according to the Bible was very strong and so righteous that he didn't actually die. God sends down a fiery chariot to swoop him up. So they both appear and are talking with him. And the disciples wake up to see what's going on. And what's Jesus doing with his hands? Can you imitate? So that's the gesture, you know, that I have you do whenever we pray a prayer, a prayer of blessing for somebody or something, like the kids that we send to annual conference or the things that we take uh, down to kids' store. So that's his way of praying for the disciples and blessing them. And I'm going to say more about what he's doing in my sermon. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for our children, for the families that bring them to church and the church that surrounds them with love and prayer. Amen. We'll be singing our middle hymn twice. It's in the Faithfully Sing booklet, number 2272, Holy Ground. Please stand as you're in. Since they had stayed awake, they saw the glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And not knowing what he said, while he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent and in those days told no one of the things that they had seen. This is the word of God. dark on every hand and we cannot understand all the ways that God would lead us to that blessed promised land but he'll guide us with his eye and we'll follow till we die we will 
understand it better by and by. By and by, when the morning comes, when the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we've overcome. We will understand it better by and by. Oft our cherished plans have failed, disappointments have prevailed, and we've wandered in the darkness, heavy hearted and alone. But we're trusting in the Lord and according to His word. We will understand it better by and by. By and by, when the morning comes, when the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we've overcome. We will understand it better by and by. We will understand it better by and by. I'm pressing on. disciples are very sleepy and drowsy. 
but they look up and notice that Jesus' clothes have been completely transformed. And his clothes and his face are a dazzling, blinding white light. And there next to him is Moses and Elijah. Moses, the great giver of the law that presents to the people how to live. And Elisha, the greatest of the prophets. The prophets are the ones that come out of the wilderness whenever the people aren't obeying the law and warn them about what is going to happen. And these two are talking with Jesus about what he's going to encounter in Jerusalem, how it is his destiny to be crucified before being buried and raised again. And the way Luke tells this story also reminds us of the resurrection or the empty tomb accounts that we read about in the Gospels as well. So this particular passage looks ahead to what's going to happen on the events that we will celebrate during Holy Week and to the resurrection of Easter and beyond that to Jesus' ascension. Occasions of Theophany where the complete righteousness and divine nature of Christ is revealed to the disciples. The disciples who are tired and sleepy but manage to recognize what they've seen. Peter impetuously gets in and tries to explain this and offer some recommendations. Jesus, it's good that we are here. Let's make three tents, one for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elisha. Jesus does not respond to Peter, but instead a cloud covers all of them, and they are frightened, and they hear a voice from heaven. This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. Theophany is when we have a direct encounter of God. And it's something that most of us have not experienced in our lives. I do know of other people who have told about having such experiences. One of my seminary classmates tied her decision to go to seminary with working at a camp where she was cleaning up a cabin. And suddenly she just saw a bright light in the room and heard a voice similar to Paul on his way to Damascus. Another friend of mine was practicing centering prayer. That's when we just sit and silently listen for God's voice without saying anything. She's a mom who has a number of children and a husband, but she was all alone in the house. And while she was there sitting with her eyes closed, suddenly she heard an audible word. She thought that her husband had come home early, but realized that's not what it was. Another person I knew was going through personal anguish in the aftermath of losing a loved one, and she felt the hand that was on her shoulder and turned to see that there was no one there. Another couple I know of was going through a lot of strain in their personal lives, and they were lying in bed next to each other, and they were reaching out to one another, and they both looked up to see angels holding on to both of them. That's the nature of theophany, a direct encounter with God. For most of us, when we talk about feeling the presence of God, we're talking about an emotional feeling, something that we felt, some sense of assurance during times of trouble, an idea that pops into our head where we're not really sure where it came from. Two appointments ago, I was living in Southside, and I knew that we were going to be moving, but I didn't know where. But suddenly, images of Roanoke started appearing in my mind, even though no one had actually mentioned that as something that was possible. And within a few weeks, I discovered that Dina and I would be moving to Franklin County. And eventually the bishop would send me here. That's the only time in my life I've had that kind of an experience. Those are other expressions and feelings of the divine for those of us who have not encountered the more dramatic times. There's a lot that can be said about what's going on in the Ukraine right now. 
I addressed that earlier in the week in the weekly prayer. And some of my colleagues were frantically rewriting their sermons for today. I felt led to deal with this issue of the transfiguration and theophany. But I do offer this one brief reflection for today, because we'll have much more to say later. Consider the events that are going on in this world, and how when events like this go on, people, even Christian people, are acting as if they don't expect to experience Christ being revealed to them. When people act like they are on their own, we see these kind of events unfold. Theophany is not the kind of thing that we can demand. It's not the kind of thing we can pull up like a movie we're going to watch on some streaming service. But there are things that we can do to condition ourselves to be in the position to receive an invitation from Christ when Christ is revealed to us. Flannery O'Connor was a writer who lived in Milledgeville, Georgia in the middle and mid 20th century. She was also a devout Roman Catholic, and her spirituality and her Christian faith can be seen in much of her writings. She was known for keeping peacocks on her property there in Milledgeville. And today, her home, which is a historic site opened up to the public, still has peacocks being kept on the property. She wrote an article where she talked about the topic of theophany, and she related it to living with the peacocks. A man visited her, and what he wanted to know is, well, how do you make them reveal their feathers to you and show off that brilliant plumage? But she said, you can't do that. They're not like trained dogs who will do something when you tell them to do something or offer them a treat. You have to live with them. You have to care for them. They have to respect you and be comfortable with you. And when the time is right, they reveal their feathers and all their brilliance to you. That's what theophany is like. Just as with the three disciples, Christ has to choose us for those moments. But there are things we can do to condition ourselves. In two days in the parking lot, we'll begin the season of Lent with our Ash Wednesday service, a time where we give up certain things and we take on certain spiritual exercises and disciplines, different practices of prayer and meditation, reading of scripture and reflecting on Christian classics, also charitable works, worship and constant communion, fasting and other spiritual exercises. These are things that we do to condition ourselves, to bring our fleshly nature under control, and to open ourselves up to the experience of the divine. God and God alone decides when to fully reveal the divine nature to each of us. But we can live our lives and condition ourselves as people who believe in the presence of God and are fully prepared to have Christ be revealed to us. The season of Lent gives us a time to work on ourselves and condition ourselves as disciples so that as Easter draws close, we may be prepared to be revealed in the presence of the risen Lord. Amen. Our affirmation of faith today is the Apostles' Creed, traditional version. Join me as we recite this historic profession. I believe in God, our Father Almighty, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who is the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the conscious power, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the unions of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last.
what joys would you like to share? Yes. Uh, three. Ella did really well at her gymnastics meet last weekend. Leah made varsity soccer. And Dad is doing well. Right. He's already gotten out of the bed. He's sitting up in a chair. PT came yesterday. They can walk in the hallway. He's eating. His vitals are stable. So they're hoping that he should be able to come home um, either today or first part of the week. And we see some help starts. All right. Other joys. If not, then as we move into concerns, um, we want to remember Linda Barnett and Tom Tankersley, who are both out ill today, uh, continuing to pray for the people of the Ukraine and in that region. Um, are there other concerns you'd like to lift up? Yes. Murphy's having surgery Tuesday. Thank you. Murphy had surgery. All prayers are appreciated. Yes, Judy? Yes. My family, my uncle died flying to the last of the generation. Uh, for your family and for your voice. For my voice, just coming back. <laughs> yes, Jane? I have two good friends who have just uh, changed to hospice care. Uh, Holly Eagle, who some people here know, uh, her last name is fine. And the deal guy, Sandy deal guy, they were members here for a long time. For your friends in your hospice. Other concerns? You have an unspoken with you. Our prayer today is written for Transfiguration Center. Let us pray. Omnipotent God, your vastness is beyond our ability to comprehend. Like Peter, James, and John, we've been invited into your inner circle. Before you, our eyes are blinded as your divine image is revealed. Through Moses, you gave people the law. Within your protective limits, we find the freedom to discover who we're intended to be. God, members of this congregation, in the way we should live, Teach us to live within your secure boundaries. When the people rebelled, your prophets offered stern warnings. Correct us when we go astray. Our efforts for self-gratification leave us unfulfilled. Living in and through your grace, we find joy. Visit those who feel disconnected from this fellowship due to illness or harmful relationships. Reveal your glory to them where they are. Then unite us as your disciples to accompany you to the cross and then to the empty tomb. Hear us now as we pray as you taught the disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive others who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us to the evil. For the honor is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is from the Faith We Sing, 2173, Shine, Jesus, Shine. Please stand and join them.
now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.